What it do, Dream Team? It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with how Europe stole the world, the entire world, planet Earth, even the solar system. No, I'm just playing. But how Europe stole the world? Before we jump into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so I get suggested. Social media, Patreon, all up top. You can subscribe to any of it. Put all the links in the description. All you gotta do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me, shoot me. I talk back. And uh, uh, if you guys got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon or in the description. There's a Google Form link. What we got? The world you live in today was sketched on paper by European men. Men who looked like me. Men who at first were just curious and adventurous, but soon whose motives morphed into an insatiable greed. A confidence that their way was better than everyone else's. This okay. confidence led to arguably the most influential series of events in human history. At least the history that affects you and me. A 500 year project of moving people and weapons and germs and language and violence to every corner of our earth. And in the process, gathering and taking home stuff to make them richer. Metal, rubber, tea, sugar, and human bodies. This isn't a history lesson. You won't hear me talk a lot about dates and names. Instead, this is the first of three videos where I want to show you how this happened. How Europe, a continent full of poor, miserable farmers, took over the entire world. And in the process, they shaped it. They shaped it to their way of thinking and speaking and doing things. So this is- Hold on, hold on, hold on, time out, Europe. Y'all was behind the scenes, you know, puppeteering everything. Uh, y'all had a, y'all said trust the process. Y'all had, y'all Y'all thought about the, the long plan. You played the long game. It, you said just give it time, couple hundred years. Maybe a couple hundred more, and we're gonna shape this entire world. So that's what y'all was doing back then. Okay, girl. I'll see you. Keep it going. It to their way of thinking and speaking and doing things. So this is part one of how Europe stole the world. I am out here on a bit of an excursion near the sea, but I wanna pause this video because I need to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is BetterHelp, a company that is trying to help you improve your mental health. I'm a giant fan of therapy. I've said it before, I will continue to I am gonna skip the ad, but shout out BetterHelp. I respect it, I respect it. Which, if you've ever looked for a therapist before, that is very, very quick. That is very easy. And that's what BetterHelp's trying to do, is just use technology to make therapy more accessible. I'm a big fan of that. You can choose how you do your therapy. You can do it over the phone. If you want to talk. Therapy that is done securely on the internet. This is why over 3 million people are on the BetterHelp platform, taking control of their mental health. So if you want to get in on this, try BetterHelp out. There is a link in my description. It is betterhelp.com your first month of BetterHelp so you can try it for supporting my channel, for supporting this video, and for making therapy more accessible. Okay, now back to this incredibly important story on how Europe stole the world. Yes, I'm going to be looking at a lot of maps. Let me try, let me pause time out this video and give this man a shout out. Because I know he put a lot of work into this video. You can tell. A lot of work was put into this video. So shout out to this man real quick. Now let's keep it going. Respect. Yes, I'm going to be looking at a lot of maps to understand this issue. Because drawing on the map is how they did things. To understand how Europe stole the world, we need to rewind to back when the map looked a little different. Hold on. Back in like 1450, the world map looked like this. 
I mean, Europe was just a bunch of smaller kingdoms. The borders look so different than they do today. They were all pretty small potatoes. Well, actually, there actually were no potatoes. Those wouldn't arrive to Europe for another 50 years. But the fact is, there wasn't an abundance of anything in Europe. Instead, Europeans were just farmers barely scraping by, constantly in debt to a few rich landlords. Life in Europe was scarce and miserable. Meanwhile, there was a bunch of other empires around the world that were thriving. There was this big empire over in the Middle East, they had silk, and then over here in India you had a big empire with spices and luxurious cotton fabrics. And then of course there was the big dynasty in China that had by this time already invented gunpowder, porcelain, and really sophisticated ships that they could use to sail around the world. Oh, and all of these empires were trading with one another, making all of them even richer. They all had better everything than Europe did, and miserable Europeans eventually wanted in on all the trade. Oh, everything. All the Europe over there struggling, and all these Europeans struggling, and you got everybody else doing good, making money. They got they import, export, trading with each other. You're like, hold up. Huh? Yeah, we want in. I, I don't care what it is. We want in. So everybody else, it seems like the hater, and Europe was a tortoise, huh? Europe, hey, slow and steady wins the race. Keep it going. Europe did, and miserable Europeans eventually wanted in on all the trade. So that's kind of the context here that sets the stage for Europe taking over the world. The first two countries that wanted in on all this trade and set out to explore were the countries that today we know as Spain and Portugal. So they start looking for a land route to get them east. They start moving east and nope, Oh look, it's the Ottoman Empire, a very powerful Middle Eastern Empire that's run by Muslims. Meanwhile, Spain and Portugal are hella Catholic and they're not being super nice to Muslims or Jews. So the Ottomans are like, no, we're not gonna let you pass through our land to get in on the trade in the East. Oh, and by the way, you can't even afford our taxes. You're miserable Europeans without a lot of money, so go away. They're gonna need another way to go East. Portugal's workaround was literally to go around the continent of Africa. Stopping along the coast to trade with the wealthy African empires along the way. This is a huge moment because it actually worked. It's near the end of the 1400s and the Portuguese are now going nuts. They're sending ships around this route that they figured out, trading with the east. And suddenly the Portuguese are dressing in luxurious fabrics. They're using cloves and cinnamon and black pepper to make their food actually taste good. Wait a minute, you're telling me they didn't have black pepper before this? Oh, everything. Jeez, that was... miserable indeed. Yeah, they, they, you definitely was miserable. You need salt and pepper. Salt and are two basic spices that are a necessity. A necessity. So I like that. So they couldn't get through the Ottoman Empire and said, nah, yeah, we not rocking with y'all. Uh, y'all can't even afford the taxes. They said, well, we got to figure it out. So Portugal said, you know what? We'll just go all the way around the African continent. But let's trade with some of these uh, rich dynasties. That, eh, let, let's get in trades with them. And, and so Portugal's, I mean, Portugal, the Portuguese, I'm sorry, I don't even know what I'm saying. No more, but uh, they started getting it done. They figured out a way. Not only are they getting east to, to, to get into the trades with everybody else, but they're also finding different points along this route to trade with rich African empires. And I just rock with it. Black you know? pepper before this? Jeez, miserable indeed. You must have some papers. So the age of exploration has begun. Miserable Europe is doing something about their situation, going out to get in on the thriving trade in the East. But remember, this isn't about conquering land, it's about trading, for now. Okay, so now Spain sees Portugal hitting the jackpot and they're kind of jelly. They want in on this too. They need to establish their own trade route to Asia. But they wanted to do things a little bit differently. Instead of following Portugal's lead and going around Africa, they listen to a pitch from this Italian sailor. And this sailor wants them to fund his new startup called, what if we sailed west to get to Asia instead of east? Super promising name. Now remember, at this point, people in Europe thought that the world looked like 
this. The logic was like, oh, we can just hop over to Asia by going this other way. So Spain was like, yes, great idea. High risk. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> Bro, is it? If that's not the craziest thing, if humanity is not something else. So they, <laughs> this is very interesting. This is very intriguing to me. So they thought we'll sail west and eventually we'll come back around on the other side and hit Asia. Hmm. Columbus, but then Columbus found that the land that was already discovered. It was already discovered I'm Native Amer by the Native Americans. Columbus, hold on. I, we didn't know this was over here. We didn't. We didn't know there was anything over here. We thought we were gonna end up in Asia, but we done found some land. To Asia by going this other way. So Spain was like, yes, great idea, high risk, high return. That's Do funny. it, Columbus. I like that. Well, it turns out the world does not look like this, and instead, over here, there are a couple of massive continents that Columbus ran into. But like many of us confident white dudes, Columbus was like, yeah, I know exactly where I am. We're like in the Indies right now. Like over those guys over there, those are Indi Indians. Yep, I can feel it. But instead he was like in Cuba. But despite the mansplaining, Columbus kind of found exactly what he was looking for and more. Great empires with rich culture and food and precious metal that weren't available to him back home. He was right on target. So he's like, all right guys, let's trade. But then he's like, wait a minute. These people don't have armies or navies protecting their stuff. So this must be kind of a different place. Different land with different rules. And this is where the biggest light bulb moment of the century goes off in this guy's head. Change of plans, boys, says Columbus. We're going to claim this land. And everyone was like, wait, what? You heard me, we are claiming this land. And the boys are like, uh, wait, weren't we here to like trade with great empires? Portugal's been doing this for like all these years and getting rich and he's like, no, they don't have armies. They're just letting us show up and like be here without a fight. So obviously that means they don't mind if we just like claim the land. I mean, I'm taking some creative liberty here on like explaining what Columbus was thinking, but like look at the letter that he wrote. Here's the letter that Columbus wrote back to the king and queen reporting on what he saw. He writes back saying that he discovered many islands inhabited by numerous peoples. And then I took possession of them for our most fortunate flag, king, yeah. making public proclamation and unfurling his standard, his flag, with no one making any resistance. No one making any resistance. Mm. Spain and Portugal. That's crazy. That's, I, I mean, we all know the story of Chris Columbus, how he did took the land, didn't f discover it. He took the land from the Indians and Native Americans that were there. But uh, that's wild. So he went over there, you know, he found land. He, he thought he knew what he, he acted like he knew where he was at. He ain't know where he was at. He ain't know about this land at the time. But you know, he got, hey, you gotta have that confidence. Yeah, I know exactly where we're at. But, so he went over there and was supposed to just be trading. But he said, you know what? Hey, I don't, what are we trading for, boys? What? We just gonna take this. And I'm not trying to be insensitive. But that what Columbus, we just gonna take it. They ain't got no armies. They ain't got no navies. They, they don't, they, they got a whole different set of rules. So why are we trading? We, we just gonna take this land and take what they got and point blank period. And, and ain't, they didn't resist. There was no resistance at all. No one making any resistance. Spain and Portugal set out to trade. They sent out to like explore and understand and get in on the global economy. But Columbus's realization was instead of trading, they could actually just claim land for themselves. And this changed everything. After all, no one was making any resistance. This moment is the foundation upon which all European imperialism grows. I'll show you. It's the moment that would give us the first big division in the minds of Europeans, the thing we wrote on paper, the old world versus the new world. This is really familiar language to us now, but it was invented in this moment. The new world 
was now seen as land that could be claimed. It was fair game to go conquer because they didn't have big armies or a Christian king. Forget trade with the east, said Columbus. There's a bunch of land that we can go take over in the west. And the race was on. Spain and Portugal didn't want to fight with each other over all this land, this conquest that they were about to undertake. So they got together and they drew some lines. No, literally, they just drew two straight lines. We have Africa, we have Europe, and then we have this line. Everything left of this line is Spain's. Everything to the right is Portugal. This is literally one of the original oh, wow. maps where they actually drew these straight lines and divided the world That's into two. Crazy. But let's look at this on a nicer looking map, please. There we go. Now we can see very clearly. Oh, look. Spain, Spain, <laughs> Spain grabbed a lot of it. Yeah, what I guess Spain did for Christopher Columbus, so, but God damn. There we go. Now we can see very clearly. Oh look, now we understand why they speak Portuguese in Brazil. So Spain and Portugal now have their spheres of the world that they can go conquer. They didn't ask anyone, they didn't negotiate with the locals, they just drew these straight lines. The Pope actually helped them broker the deal. Classic. But again, this is a huge thing that I want to explain in this series, that these were not just lines. They weren't just like lines on paper. They were actually a shift in the paradigm, a new way of thinking about the world. No one making any resistance. It was a story that Europeans could now tell themselves. Old world versus new world. Claimed versus unclaimed. A new way of thinking. Think I'm being overly simplistic about this? Let me show you something. One, two, three, four. These were a juicy find. I found this amazing Portuguese nautical atlas. It's a bunch of maps that the Portuguese Navy drafted up right after these two lines divided the world between Spain and Portugal. And it is an amazing series of maps, but not only because it's visually stunning, but also because it lets us into the mind of how the Portuguese saw the world after they divided it with Spain. Oh, this, this atlas. That's wild. First of all, that he has all these maps. I think that's super dope. This is a super cool video. Uh, or you, you feel like you're learning a lot. Like, I did not, did not know one bit of this information. I knew Columbus and that was about it. But this is, this is absolutely wild. They basically just said, we are here on this land. It is our land. Simple. That, it was literally, like, draw lines. Spain and Portugal was like, hey, let's not fight each other. There's no point. Let's share the land. Let, let, let's get together, let's, let's divide it, share it. Like basically, just, just claimed all the land and took over a city life. This atlas reads like a storybook. It's like the Portuguese were so giddy about giving themselves permission to steal half the world that they had to write a children's story about it. That's what it feels like, that's not what it is. But just look at this. Here's the title page. You can see that at the center is the sphere that was given. If, can y'all let me know, like, what are these uh, in the comment section? Are these, like, meant to be, like, oh, these, like, heads that are, it looks like they're spitting out water? What are those? What are, what are those meant to represent? Title page. You can see that at the center is the sphere that was given to Portuguese. Brazil, Africa, what is now the East Indies. And here on every corner, you see these angels that are blowing wind into the sails of the Portuguese who are out on their land grab mission. So this is just the title page. The subsequent pages of this atlas are close-ups on different regions. This is the Caribbean over here, look. This will become Cuba, this will become Haiti, Dominican Republic. 
North America, South America, all of this unclaimed, up for grabs. Here, our story depicts all these flags. Some of them are Spanish flags on the islands on their side of the line, but then you have Portuguese flags on the Portuguese side of the line. The status of this land, according to the fantasy of the Portuguese, changing from unclaimed to claimed by men on ships with Christian crosses on their sails, showing up and planting flags. This was like playing a board game to them. I swear to God. I swear to God that's what it was. Here's another page. This one's a close-up on Brazil. And look, we've got people over here. We've got dark-skinned, naked people with primitive tools and no homes. It looks like down here in Brazil, they spend their days chopping wood naked and dancing, all while being gazed upon by fantastical birds and dragons. This was an official naval atlas drafted for the king. And if its message wasn't clear enough on how these people should be depicted, the atlas has a little info box up here where they say that the Brazilians are, quote, savage and very brutal. This is one of the first atlases ever made, and it wasn't really a navigation tool. It was much more a declaration of a new way of seeing the world. Unclaimed territory, subhuman people, all of it up for grabs by Christian boats. So yeah, this is how it all started. Under this new paradigm, both empires expanded very quickly, forcing the Spanish and Portuguese languages across the ocean mining vast quantities of silver, creating plantations for tobacco and sugar, and in the process massive- Look how small like Spain and Portugal are on this map, guys. Look what they did. That of silver, crazy. creating plantations for tobacco and sugar, and in the process massacring the people who were living in this new world both with their weapons, but also with their European city germs that the people being conquered didn't have immunity to. I mean, this whole thing started with curiosity, with a thirst to get in on the trade in Asia. But soon, as this fantasy of unclaimed land came into the picture, the goal shifted, the project pivoted, yeah. and soon Europe was telling themselves a new story, that they, enlightened Christians, were entitled to claim it. And while this story starts with Spain and Portugal, Soon it spread. Other European countries poked their head up from their farm work and said, hey, we're white Christians also. We know how to sail. We want in on this story of unclaimed land. And that's the next chapter of the story. One that I will tell you in the next part of the series. I can't wait, bro. I honestly can't wait because that was absolutely wild to me. This is, this is crazy. But this is super dope. I'm excited for the next part, bro. He's awesome. He is awesome. That's all we got for this one. You guys got a favorite video you want to see me react to, you can subscribe to Patreon or in the description. There's a Google Form link. Hit the link. Fill out your suggestions. Send it to me. Want me to get to yours faster? Fill out premium. Subscribe to the channel. Ring notification bell. Get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Uh, social media, Patreon, all up top. Uh, I'll put all the links in the description. All you got to do is hit the link. Follow me. Talk to me. Love talking to you guys. You guys are the most incredible. Team on YouTube. It's your boy Dinia. Out.